Yeah, man. Pick it up right here in the book Kalelus by Cyclone Covey. There's so much in this book. <laughs> so much to uncover, so much to recon, investigate. We're picking up on page 63. An impressive geologist who had been a member of the University of Arizona faculty, Clifton J. Sarley, S-A-R-L-E, pointed out an Indian site in the 1920s, now totally obscured by extensive cultivated fields. A few miles north and two left from the artifacts site, which he said showed occupation at the same stratum that is at the same time as that of the lead artifacts. This Santa Cruz stratums, stratum were occupied in the Tucson vicinity, disclosed primarily pit house traces as a building style. A few sites had puddled adobe walled structures similar to Casa Grande. Whether or not these latter postdates the Santa Cruz phase. No pre-Spanish ruins have been found in the area which were made entirely of masonry. None of the known Indian sites, for one conclusion, can be misconstrued as possible ruins of a medieval European settlement. But the house types, cremation urns, etc. from the Santa Cruz phase along the Santa Cruz River do not quite correspond to the Santa Cruz 
phase of Hohokam proper, suggesting a different tribe in this sector of the Hohokam domain. It too likely spoke a dialect of Utah Aztecan, the very spread language family embracing Nahuatl and Nahuat. And all those have those HUAs in them. Hawa. So that's the code word. This is the breakdown. This is where we really are breaking the spell. We are keeping the code to break the spell. We're, we're breaking the code of Hijack City <laughs> so that we can decipher this code. And we see the creator's name in everything. From the Hawashua, Joshua's, you know, to place names like Hawaii and all these Hawa, Hawa, Kubas, and, you know, everywhere. Now you got this language, the Nahuatl, N A H U A T L. So that Hawa, that Hawat, Nahuat. The Desert Pima and Riverine Papago, who seem to be Hohokam descendants, speak one and the same language, Pima or Pimic, a very divergent dialect of Utah Aztec, Ute as in Udal as in Judah Mana. The surviving Pueblo Indians of New Mexico and Arizona speak four languages, Tanoan, including Tiwa, the exceedingly archaic dialect of Taos or Tao. <laughs> so they speak in that Ta, that Tao language, all right? Tawa, Tawa. The dialect of Hano, H-A-N-O, and Towa, T-O-W-A, that Wa. The dialect of Yemis, as well as the erstwhile Pecos, P-E-C-O-S, Karasan, Karasan Manat. They spell it K-E-R-E-S-A-N. So these are the different uh, languages, you know, that they're finding around these, uh, you know, New Mexico, Arizona area. Right. Of course, we got the Kara, like the Kara Katai. Kara means black in Hebrew, or excuse me, in in Turk Turkic. Kara means black. They spell it with a K, a C, or a Q. You see, Kara spelled. Q A R A sometimes, uh, C A R A or K A R A. So we see how all this stuff is interchangeable. But we are deciphering the language. So you got the Tawa. All right, then you got the Karasan, K E R E S A N, including Eastern, the dialect of Zia. Interesting, like Zia in the cities of gold, right? So you got. <coughs> You got the language of Tao, <laughs> Tiwa, Tawa, Taos. Then you got the dialect of Zia. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh, where's Esteban? Oh, I guess we speaking it, right? <laughs> I guess we speaking Esteban. Let's go. <laughs> and Western of that of Acoma and Laguna, Zuni, the language of the Zuni, the Sh Shoshone. Shoshanian, Shoshani, the language of the Hopi villages, except Hano. Of course, you got the Shoshani Naga tribes, right? You got the Naga Hopi. You got the Naga Zuni. All these are Nagas. So we're talking about you in, in Arizona. We're talking about you in New Mexico. We're talking about you in Judah. That's why it's so important for us to decipher, to not act like, you know, this we're above this information or this information is above us, our pay, our pay grade, our, our payload. Like we can't, we can't understand it. We can understand it. Now we can decipher it. We can break their code. Keep our code, break their code. You know what I'm saying? We got to break their shit down. Two codes can't, you know, uphold. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be the code of Hijack City <laughs> or the code of Hawa Nakaville for the night. That's interesting. You got the language of Tao. You got the language of Zia, dialect of Zia. The Shoshonean language. They connected with the Hopi villages. All of these are Ute Aztecan languages with the possible exception of Zuni. And Shoshonean or 
the exception of Zuni, which has no no near relative, but still seems to fall inside the Ute Aztec family. Interesting. So we're going to have to dig on the language of Zuni because he's saying it has no known near relative, my life. Some space language, man. What these people speaking over there? In the Zuni Cibola. Cibola. We're talking New Mexico. Let me get my tea. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. I love digging on Kalelus with you. You know, right here at 432 to drive radio. Taking some time to have some nice, healthy book time. Some book reading time. You know? A great place where you ain't going to be you know, since you could pop off about this tenderoni, <laughs> tell the truth. Man, you know, it's a great place here at 432 The Drop. Radio, all praise for why. So we got to dig on this Zuni. Zuni. No possible known relative, okay, but still seems to fall under the Ute Aztecan family. The present Pueblos appear to have been found by refugees from earlier Pueblos to the northwest or north. Shoshanian dialects found all the way to the west coast are surprisingly not necessarily closer to each other than to Aztec or classic Aztec Nahuatl. Benjamin Lee Worf showed in 1935 that any one Shoshanian dialect may be closer to Aztec than to a neighboring dialect. A large Shoshanian branch is Comanche, which would not have been found on the Great Plains east of the Rockies during the Santa Cruz phase of Hohokam, but due north of Tucson, ranging the glorious expanses of Utah. No significant influence not traceable to local evolution or to diffusion from the Valley of Mexico has been found in the remains of the, of the Hohokam culture. Remember, the Hohokam means those that have disappeared. Now, it don't mean you disappeared literally, but maybe like Hawa said, you know, maybe the name Israel would no longer be in remembrance. And we're not talking about literally the name Israel because our people never called themselves that. They didn't speak that tongue to say Israel. <laughs> but your name has not been remembered, right? You've been called all these other bywords. That's why it's important for us to retrace our steps, see where the hijack has been stealing from us, and take it back piece by piece. <laughs> we're talking titles, we're talking David, we're talking Khan, we're talking Ramani, my nigga. Khan. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We know it's a Naga on Naga war. We know that the hijack Romans were also uh, neat. Negroid, <laughs> Negro folk like us, right? But they are not the true Romani because the pomegranate don't belong to them, right? The pomegranate don't belong to them. The Romani in Hebrew, the pomegranate only belongs to you. So the hijack can't be no Romani. No matter how many times we read it, no matter how many times we hear it. Only we can be the Pomegranaga. Our titles are important to us because it means something. They all have a meaning. And the Rimon turned into the Roma, which is where they're picking it up. Cyclone Covey and David Lowe in the Forbidden Histories of America, you know, trying to just, you know, paint a Tartarian <laughs> style, Roman esque, you know, uh, collage of some white empire here of Roman Jews. But you got to take back the Jew and turn it into Judah. 
And you got to take back the Roman and turn it back into the red mod, the pomegranate naga of the promised land. We are the red mod. So we can't give our titles to no more hijacks, man. The game, you know, it's the fourth quarter. <laughs> it's wakey wakey. It's awareness time. If you're aware that this title means promised land, then it belongs to you. Calais Luce belongs to you. We talk Zuni Hawaku. It belongs to you. You are the Ramani. We are the Rema, the Rema, Rema, the Red Ma. Let's go. Copper color cons found here. Yet even the latter Salado, when residing in the Ho Ho Com towns themselves, fell to influence the Ho Ho Com way of life although leaving their own shirts and architecture tangibly behind pottery making probably did not figure in the roman jewish tradition so i'm glad we had that little talk so that it could prepare us when we hear a terminology like roman jewish because you won't hear that today in 2021 ain't nobody gonna be like hey i'm a roman jew no one's really claiming to be Roman, even if they live in Rome, they don't really truly claim to be Roma, <laughs> Rema. It's more of an ish factor, an ism factor, man. We dodge the ishes and the isms. So when they say Roman Jewish tradition, you know, they're talking promised land, Remani, Rema, the Naga right here in America. You got to break it down. You got to decipher the code. And once you break through, we out of here, baby. But we all got to see clearly. Why do you think they keep giving you all these false titles, my naga? They give you the false title because the real title means something. To your consciousness. So you want to call the hijack Romans? Fine. But the Romani title? No, nah, that's mine. That's mine, my naga. You playing with me, you know what I'm saying? They take the con title, no, no, no. That's mine, my naga. <laughs> you playing with us. You gotta, you know, be that clear cut, true to life, down and up for who you are. The Amaro Khan, nah, 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 that's me, my naga. That's what you gotta say. Now that's me. What what y'all what y'all got to say about it? Cause you can't tell us who we are. How can you tell us who we're not? Hey okay, man, we in Kalalu. So who's the Roman Jewish? Quick, quick, quick. Who's the Rome? Who, who's, who's the real Rama? Just because you're conditioned doesn't mean you put limiters on and you can't grow no more and you can't learn no more. And no one can teach you no more because you've limited your study. You've limited your investigation. You thought all this time the hijack was the Rimani when in reality it's been you that they've stolen the title from. We thought all this time, our last names belong to the hijack. Shit, man, love to let us find the truth, man. We have to really start looking at our surnames a little differently, right? Content law. Titles are important. It's vibration. And it helps you the cold hijack view when they throw a term like Roman Jewish at you, you know you're saying, oh, okay. Pottery making probably did not figure in the Roman Jewish tradition. 
so that the Indian made pots they presumably would have used would be indistinguishable from Santa Cruz ware. So pottery did not figure in the Roman Jewish tradition. Are they looking at the hijack Roman, the hijack Roman, and the and the Jewish pottery? Are they even looking your way at all in this Roman Jewish world they're painting? Because if they put it together, that Indian pot is the Romani pot, and the Romani pot is the Indian pot, because both of them are connected right here in America to the Promised Land. Now, the hijack ain't no Romani. Them is Romans. <laughs> Them is just hijacks. They can't even have that. You know, I just got to strip this hijack bare. I mean, bear with me. I just got to strip the hijack bare of their titles because they've given us all these bywords, my nigga. They've given the Negro all these bywords, right? If you ain't been part of a group of people that have been put under all these bywords all this time, you might not feel me on this. You might be able to throw a title around. It might not mean none to you. But to a nation that's been given bywords the whole damn time, turn Naga into nigger, right? <laughs> Black. Colored. And everything in between. Darky. <laughs> African, right? African American. Damn. Why not Remani? Why can't we do that? If we're just talking promised land, pomegranate, Nagas. Why were the pomegranates on the bottom of the of the garments of the priestly garments? You got the pomegranates, my Naga. We're talking blue, purple, red, white linen, gold thread. Hey, how the dragon? Dragon Child for that Nagaville flag. Amazing work. And why not Rema? Why can't we be the Rema? We can't be the Rema? We can't be the chosen, promised land, seed of Hawa, children of Hawa, connected with the pomegranate, my Naga. The hijack gotta be Ramani. Well, how convenient, you know? We can't have our titles back. They can have them forever, right? Romani has a meaning. Attach the meaning to the people, and you'll see clearly. Yuda, Hawauda has a meaning. Attach the meaning to the, to the tribe of Judah, and you'll see clearly when they say, Roman Jewish, you're just talking about the tribe of Judah. You're talking about the tribe of Hasharah, connected with the promised land. Connected with Eden. With the Orinoco flow. No, we can't give our titles away. We're taking our titles back to press the title. They can't have that. And Amma and Abba, they can't have those either. What's that left? What's that leaving with? European, they can't have that. <laughs> French, can't have it. They can't have them titles, so they're bare. You see what I'm saying? You stripped them bare. Where they gonna run? They got to come out of their dog face, you know, uh, dog, uh, <laughs> dog house. <laughs> And say, look, this is who we are then. Fine. Fuck it. You don't want to give us the title? All right, fine. This is who we are. This is <laughs> this is what the hijack look like. Good, man. Now, now we see. But you ain't going to be hiding in our tents no more. In our tabernacle. With our titles. With our vibration. Titles are important. Because the most high. You know. Gives you nobility. And frequency. That noble is referred and revered, you know what I mean, 
by the knowledge, by the tribe, under a frequency, under a vibration. You have a tribe, you have a chief, it's a frequency, it's a presta, it's a frequency that you're referring to this con in. And aha, and trust, and humility, and respect, and agreement for the connection with Hawa, and the order and the flow that comes with a title, that comes with a with a vibration. You want to be ox? You want to be aqua? Well, if you want that title of ox, if you want that title of aqua, you got to earn that, right? When you give an ak that title, ak, if that ak knows the meaning, the ak should feel, you know, very grateful for that. It should be Ahab all, you know, all the way up, you know, that someone considers them a wall of protection. That they've earned that right in somebody's life to be a wall of protection. Ultimate honors. But that's more than physical. That means you KTC, M-H-O-E. That's the best way you could protect me. Is to be KTC. I don't need no other form of protection more than that from any of my ox or aquas is for them to be true to life coke, raising their frequency on the daily. Therefore, they're gonna be vibing me up. You know what I'm saying? That's a title. It's an earned vibration. You know the difference between when you refer somebody as, hey nigga, what's up, nigga? Hey, hey ox, two different frequencies, right? <laughs> you, you understand the difference between hey, hey my con, hey, hey my naga. You know, it comes with a different meaning, a different frequency. Hey boy, hey look here, kid. <laughs> like that's a different vibration, right? So it's a title, it's a flow. You know, back to the red mind, back to the pomegranate, back to your names, your houses, your nobility. That comes in cold, your land, right? It's been a long time without a king, without a priest. Hosea 3. For the dismount. Remains other than the lead artifacts would have been as thoroughly destroyed as Indian revenge found possible. Indian revenge, okay. Plus the violent ravages of periodic floods. Two well-documented mission churches at Bach, B-A-C. B-A-C, Bach. As modern as the 18th century. Together with the whole Sapor, Sabapori village of Stok Son have apparently as completely disappeared as Rhoda, have, com have apparently as completely disappeared as Rhoda, unless Rhoda's ruins yet lie deep under Kalish on the hilltop above the artifact site. So they're looking for Rhoda, my knife. And Rhoda, you know, it can be found on the ancient maps of Arizona. There's a whole kingdom connected to it. So of course they buried it, my knife. So bodies on bodies, Hey man, I heard you. I, natural by law. Okay, I, I heard you on that Kaleidos part two. Bodies on bodies. I think they ready. I know they ready. Tribe up music. We popping off. Yeah, for the dismount. They looking for Rhoda, my naga. Have you found Rhoda? No, you hear about, you know, all, you know, Phoenix, Arizona, all these main cities. You don't hear about. Rhoda, right? Just like in California, we think we know, oh, I'm in Cali because I'm in L.A. No, you're in the city, but you don't know California. <laughs> How can you say you've been here? It's like, you know, it's like somebody saying, ain't no artifacts in California. I've been there before. I visited Melrose. I visited uh, Beverly Hill. <laughs> I went to the theme park. Have you really been to California? I've been to Utah. Have you really been to Utah? Or oh, I've been to Zion. Have you really been to Utah? To make such a bold statement. 
That's ain't nothing to see here, boss. <laughs> ain't nothing over here. Blasphemy, man. Have we found Rhoda? He says, Rhoda's ruins yet lie deep un under Kalish on the hilltop above the artifact site and or one or both of the neighboring hilltops on either side. So it could be on a hilltop under what he's calling Kalish or Kalish, C-A-L-I-C-H-E. Hey Amen. The investigation continues. We'll leave it right here. It says a lone thunderbird, on the other hand, attest the influence of Indian culture on the Jews of Kalelus. Come on, man. Who's the Jews of Kalelus? <laughs> Who's Judah of Kalelus? Oh, to them, they're Jewish people on some ancient mission from uh, where Jerusalem or something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, fake Jerusalem, not real Jerusalem. Not real Perusalem, Jerusalem. So who's the Jews of Kalelus really, my not? Yeah, man, it's you. You are the real, you know, Judah, not Jew, Judah. You're the real Judah of Cali, right? Kalelus. Now he says, a lone thunderbird, on the other hand, attests the influence of Indian culture on the Jews of Kalelus. <laughs> Who's the Indian? Who's the copper color race family? Oh, yeah, me again. Me, me, me. That's right. That's right, IJ. You took it all from me. I'm taking it all back. Me, me, me. I deserve a me, me, me moment since you've been you, 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 and it all over the damn place. You've been destructive all over the mother sucking place. You know what I'm saying? That time is done, man. Y'all, y'all rolling like this, IJ. Well, I guess we, I guess we gotta pop off now. Guess we gotta be cold keepers now. So yes, the influence of Indian culture on the, uh, the Hebrews of Kalelus, they are the same people again. Just like the Romani, it's the same people as the. Indians as the Judah, uh, you know, Israelites, whatever you want to call it, Hebrews, you know, all my noggins, you know, I'm talking, I'm talking to you. I mean, it's hard to describe us, you know what I mean? No one title can really fully describe us because we are the Drakan, you dig? I mean, we are the fire, we are the ether, my noggin, the water, the earth. You can't really put a title on that. You can't put a title on. Hawa, you know what I'm saying, beyond a simple understanding of it, you know what I'm saying, but you truly can't fully grasp, you know, I could say breath of security, but you can't really grasp the essence of your frame and shaper, you know, that's just the best we can do so far, you know what I'm saying, um, but all praise Hawa, our breath of security, our secure breath, that we can see you know, through this tenderoni that we can see through Hijack City. And, you know, we might not be able to avoid, you know, all of the chaos, you know what I mean? But we can sure say that we've dodged a whole lot of hijack. We dodged a whole lot of hijack together, Drop Nation. <laughs> You've been dodging your own hijacks, and I'm proud of you. We are all proud of each other. So they're finding Indian culture on the Jews and Kalelus. Well, I'll be. <laughs> in so far as their engraved symbols allow us to judge, would it not be bizarre if Kalelus were the whole calm name for their desert country? Well, the whole calm means those that disappeared and you know, where's these promised land nagas today? I guess you disappeared because they took your titles. Now you calling the hijack Romani. Damn, we still in the Ruwak Tarde Ma. Giving our titles away. Giving the promised land away. Still giving the promised land away. Oh, yeah, we, we first here, but we must be from somewhere else. Still giving the promised land away. 
a hop to the bro yourself. No pork, no funions, all sauce, my nine. <laughs> hey, we going up, man. Clear cut, dragonfly perspective, popping off of Nagaville. Would it be, would it not be bizarre if Kalelus were the Hohogam? And the Hohogam were the Reman, the Reman. And the Reman are you. Cause the promised land is yours. The Quetzalcoatl or Plume Dracon would not be necessary to account for the snake or Dracon entwining the two Nahushtans since ancient European, Asian, and African people also held snakes sacred. So again, is the serpent the snake or is the serpent the dragon? And if the serpent is the dragon, then why is there an alchemical serpent and an alchemical dragon? We're talking energy, frequency, and vibration. Khan. You can't have an alchemical serpent and an alchemical dragon and say that the serpent is the dragon. Clearly in alchemy, those energies are very, very much opposites. One is just now bursting into consciousness. One is coming out of the impersonal nature to burst into consciousness. That's your artificial intelligence. That's the serpent. That's the snake. Got a lot of snakes in the grass. The dragon, well, that comes from an unknown origin. Mysterious quicksilver, they're calling it all kind of stuff. They say it's the vessel, the life vessel where the Ruach is contained. You want to raise your Kundalini, your serpent, or you're raising a snake, or you're raising a dragon. How come in 1828, Noah Webster Dictionary, the definition of a dragon, uh, number three, is a person, male or female, a fierce or violent person. Well, damn, this dragon must be violent for a reason. Maybe you took their titles. Maybe you took their things. Maybe you killed their children. This fierce or violent person, male or female, is a dragon. Wonder why we popping off? It's because you don't see clearly. This is our move. This is our flow. And this is our play. We're inspiring Nagas across Nagaville to buy land and build. We're giving them, you know what I'm saying, a focal point, something to watch, something to witness, help us build our fence, and watch us contribute, you know, fall back and just witness, do, do what you got to do. But we popping off. We popping off, man. We know that all my Nagas will be there, you know, when it's their time to, you know what I'm saying? But we all can, you know, vibe up to the inspiration of Hawaii. That it's time to take ourselves much more serious. Continue our frequency. And take back what's ours. I love all you, my Nagas. The kids of Ko'otu, Draka, <laughs> is all over this new, new Hushta. You know what I mean? The Hopi who still perform the Binia, Bayanil. They say snake dance. We know we're talking Draka, involving the handling of these live rattlesnakes. So what they're doing today is like a knockoff of the OG. The OG Hopi was rocking with the dragons. These hijacks today just got rattlesnakes. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Then they want to go into snake worship. Well, you know, you know you're talking hijack city. Associate their earliest snake worship with what had been the Hohokam nucleus of settlements near Snake Town in Casa Grande. The living, ingrown, matrilineal Hopi culture of northeastern Arizona startlingly, startlingly preserves the Hohokam culture of southern Arizona. 
as reported by the Afghan Chinese Buddhist pilgrim Hoi Shan in 502 AD at the King Qing Hoi, <laughs> then quite aged, had departed the Buddhist colony in Changja, 50 to 60 miles southwest of Changsha. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing my best. With four fellow Afghans. Remember the Afghan? Son of who? Or grandson of who? Jeremiah? Let's go, man. During the Southern Sun persecution of Buddhists in 458 and had spent many years at the Maya capital far to the south of his California landfall latitude as well as visiting what he called the country of women in the later snake town phase of the pioneer period of Hoho Khan, Arizona. He correctly reported the pit house dwellings of the country of women, the country of women. Whereas, of course, the Hopi, by the time we can get track of them, had adopted the Pueblo style as the Hoho Khan were adopting it before their disappearance. They disappeared. Where'd they go? Another frequency? Uh-oh. Besides women ownership of property, Hoi, Alluded to corn cultivation, corn shuck weaving, Kashina mask. Oh, that reminds me of that Esteban stuff. Yeah, you know I mean, okay, okay. Uh, back carriage of papooses, the shyness and dignity of the women who looked like Chinese women and their marriage to men of dog and snake clans <laughs> who participated in the all male dances. These data, this, these data have been preserved since 502 in the official dynastic histories of South China and since 1321 also as republished in the antiquarian researches of the eminent scholar Ma Tuan Lin. The material of the country of women comes from the banquet speech of Hoi's court interrogator, Lord Yu Kai, rather than from Yu's transcript of the interrogation thus requiring more reading between the hyperboles than does the former document. The Hopi, from their own name for themselves, Hopi too, or peaceful ones, present a composite of many tribal strains. The connection of one or more of them with the old Hohokam must give us pause in considering which Utah Tekken, Utah Aztecan speaking people near the Santa Cruz could possibly have been eligible for the name Tall Texas. Remember Sylvain and Solomon, let's go. While neither Hohokam nor Toltec archaeology confirmed the Latin and Latin cross inscriptions, it also does not contradict them. It does not, in fact, find Hohokam ends or Toltec beginnings to confirm or contradict their accounting or their amounting to the same. So they can't find no beginning. They can't find no end. What do he say? It does not, in fact, find ho ho com ends. Remember the people that disappeared? You, my nigga? Because they took your title? Your Remani title? It does not, in fact, find ho ho com ends. They can't find an end to them or Toltec beginnings. To confirm or deny that they're the same people. They don't know. <laughs> See this big gap in history and these people that no one can really walk in these shoes and say, okay, I'm the Hohokam, I'm the Toltec, I'm the Ibaru, I'm the real Indian around this piece. And yes, I am the Khan. I am the Rema, the Pomegranate. And this is. Kalelu. Hey, brick by brick, we're going to rebuild our house. Support Joy World. Hit that GoFundMe. Hit us up. Music at 432thedrop.com to find out more about it. You want to put you know, hands to the soil, my nigga, you know what I'm saying? You want, you know, you got strong hands to build, you know, you got expertise, 
get at us, keep getting at us, you know, don't get lost in the shuffle. It's a lot of moving parts, but keep making yourself known and you know, make sure you code it up, you know, because the frequency is real. <laughs> you know, we could sense a hijack a mile away, you know what I mean? So please be in the frequency of the code, you know, of Awa, of Ama Aba, so we can build together, you know what I'm saying, with clarity and with the pure water vision and respect and reverence for our creator. You know, putting our power first, man. No power before or beside our power. All praise our creator. And the water to the entire Ether Squad and all the contributors on our GoFundMe. The water for you and all the sponsors right here. Dragon sponsors. You know who you are. Copper Dragon, Silver Dragon, go. Hey, ha for you. You want to be a sponsor right here at 432? Make sure we keep our flow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We got an ad-free situation. There's no commercials. You just chilling. You know, we don't go after none of that, man. We know we got the support from our sponsors, man. So become a sponsor. We need many, many more to keep this going, my naga. Hit us up. Again, music at 432thedrop.com. To learn more, or just hit up the website, 432thedrop.com, and click Dragon Sponsor. And we're going to keep it coming for you. Ether Squad, a high for you. And hey, out to the entire the squad and the entire earth plane of Nagaville. Shalom. Yeah, man.